Hello, hello, hello. This is the final top 10 video for 2023. This is the top 10 uh, video games of 2023. And, you know, this is just, you know, basically the games that I, you know, I, I played. I played a few. I played a decent amount of games in 2023. I was gaming. And I, I, there was a lot of good games in 2023. If you don't think there was a lot of good games in 2023, it's a you problem. That's all I'll say about that. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to start at number 10. Crazy enough, you're going to judge me on this one, but I'll explain. You just got to let me cook. Let me cook. Number 10. Number 10, only up. Only up was, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm hearing the booze. I'm hearing the booze. What the fuck? Only up, hun. But let me explain. Uh, only up was a game that I had a lot of fun with over the summer. You know, it kind of came in as a fad. You know, I think it was just a very fun game just to get into it. I love these style of games. And the more I had fun with it was because of due to the speedrunning capabilities of it. I think the speedrunning capabilities of it were very fun. I think, you know, watching people who get break records and find new metas and new glitches and stuff to go ahead and beat the game was really cool. I finished only with a horror sub 30, you know, um, sub 30 uh, with my fastest run. But it's like it was still fun and I had plenty of fun playing it throughout the way. So, you know, I know, judge me a lot, but it personally to me, I ha I had a lot of fun with this game. Number nine, Super Mario RPG, which is a game I'm actually still playing, but I'm at the very final boss, so it's like I don't really have much to do. I'm there. <laughs> so, um, I've had a very, very, I've had a lot of fun with this game as well. This is my first time playing Super Mario RPG. I never played the original. So the remake, you know, was a very fun, you know, getting into it. So I was glad when they announced it because it's like, I was like, oh, damn, this is something that like, I've been wanting to play, but I just never did. And yeah, I've enjoyed it very through and through. I think the characters are fun. I think Gino, I think Cloudy are, uh, not, not Cloudy, uh, uh, Mallow are very cool. I think how they did Bowser in this, you know, he's trying to keep up with this persona. Like, oh no, I'm this badass, you know, leader. And I didn't lose my castle. And then all the ca characters and bosses you fight and people you meet throughout, I think it's, it's just a super fun thing. And I can see why it had the price that it had back in the day. It's, it is missing big Yoshi though. I, I know that much. It's missing the big Yoshi. So. Yeah, that kind of docked a few points off for me. I like the big Yoshi. <laughs> um, all right, number uh, number eight, we're gonna have the Resident Evil Four remake, which I uh, love the Resident Evil series. If anybody knows me, I am very huge in the Resident Evil. I played almost all of them, except for I haven't played the DS, like the DS ones or Revelations, but uh, I've played every other one, and I've loved the series like since I was a kid. I played the. I went ahead and finished the original Resident Evil Four because I always played it as a kid, but I never beat it. I always got stuck in the castle. <laughs> I always got stuck like in the castle as a kid, so I never beat it. And then, so I beat it in 2022. Uh, I beat the original on stream, and then like right before this one came out, I beat it as a uh, randomizer as well. And uh, it's just it's a phenomenal game. One of the, like some people's game, best game of all time. And you know, Resident Evil Four remake added on to that. It still feels like it's a different game. It's it's a, it has that Resident Evil Four feeling there, but it still feels like it's something different because it has so much added on. You know, with the expanded areas and all of that, the enemies. Uh, it's way harder in my opinion. I think it's way harder than the original one because I played on hard and it was rough. It, it, it took me a little bit, but it was rough. Um, I think it's just super fun. I think the customization, the the crafting of all that. They made the house, which oh my god, that was like. Jesus, I just got PTSD thinking about it. The house scene, the original one was already, you know, like kind of difficult, you know, starting out like as a kid, like, you know, it was kind of difficult. This one as an adult, the new one, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking on hard. That shit was hard. And it really wouldn't have been as bad if they didn't have those juggernaut dudes that came in with like the hammers that chase you down. Dude, that dude was kicking my ass. But it's like when I finally got it, bro. It, it took me like an hour. I'm not gonna lie, I sucked at the game. It took me like an hour because I didn't have, uh, I didn't have that much um ammo and I didn't have that much like healing stuff. So it's like what they gave me is like what I was kind of good with. So oh my, it, it, it was rough. But I when I did it, I was so happy. I was so happy. Um, I think they just made everything better. I think you know, I think what they added into it, you know, when it comes to like you know the castle and then like the big uh, El Gigante is like throwing. I think that seems cool. I do wish they had. They kept, they took some stuff out that I did miss, but it's like, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's still fine. And I do know that they added that stuff that they took out. I haven't played it, but I do know the stuff that they took out. They still have an Ada story for the DLC. So you can still get all that in Ada story as well. But 
wonderful game phenomenal remake go play it please go play it. it's a great game it's not too scary it's very actiony and it's just a great time leon's phenomenal all right we have number seven mario wonder mario wonder was my first is my first uh 2d mario in a very long time i haven't played one since probably the one on the wii or the ds because i didn't play the wii one and i didn't play their uh the original uh other ones as well so i but this was fun it was a very fun game i think it's you know it has a little bit of a challenge to it and and still and it's think like it's fun you know it's colorful it's very easy going i think it's a good it'd be a good game to play with like friends and family and stuff like that uh it's just it, it's just all around the charm of it is there and it doesn't feel like any other 2d mario game and i think that's where you know a lot of people go stale with those because sometimes they kind of do feel the same but this one it definitely felt like it was its own game and you know with the power i do wish they had more power-ups i'll say that that's my biggest complaint i wish there's more power-ups because the elephant one and the bubble one were they're cool in the beginning but it's like uh i do think the drill one i think is the best power-up the drill is the best power-up of the new ones um so but just the wonder seed areas and all that those levels are really cool the secret world was really cool and all the gauntlets oh my god the gauntlets great time great time i didn't stream it but i, I had a lot of fun with this game it, i played on the, when i basically kind of went out of town when i went on that vacation i played it and then like i beat it kind of when i came back it, it was a good time though very good time now let's go ahead and get in number six which was my number one you know when after i played it i was like damn this is a great game damn this is a great game but then i let time settle i played some other stuff and I kind of came down to it. I was like, okay, it's good, but it wasn't that good, I guess, when I think about it compared to anything. Uh, and this, uh, we're going to go ahead and say this is FF16. FF16 was a fun game, very fun game, but it did lack in, I want to say, it kind of does have a little repetitive feeling. You know, it kind of tried to go that Devil May Cry route where it's like a very good action RPG where, you know, a lot of like this, a lot of hack and slash going through killing enemies and stuff. But it wasn't too much variety when it comes to a lot of the enemies. And it wasn't like a lot of variety when it came to the missions. I do think the hunts were very fun. Uh, the hunts were very cool. And then I think the boss battles were probably some of the best boss battle spectacles we've ever seen in, in, in gaming right now. When it comes to like uh, the power and the spectacle of it. that uh, the, Bahama, uh, the Bahamut fight. The first, you know, Ifrit and the Phoenix fight. The uh, Ultima fight, it, it's just all good. The Titan fight. Uh, the only fight, the boss fight, I think was kind of lackluster and it kind of sucked. And it kind of really sucks because I was like, man, he was so cool. was the uh, Barbados and uh, the Odin and the Odin fight. Like, I don't think the Odin fight was that cool. It could have been way better. It, I wish it would have It would have got a kind of like an icon fight like the rest of them. But I guess it's like they were kind of like, damn, how do we come back after that Bahamut fight? But. Hey, I don't know, but I th do think the Ultimate Fight was still pretty cool. Um, I think the worst part that dragged was the mid fight, uh, the mid missions where you had to go ahead and build the ship. That part sucked so bad that, like, I I, I was like, holy shit! And that's kind of where the dip in the quality of the game kind of came was like when that came. So it was eh, but I do think you know overall the music was great. I think probably yeah, the music of the year. From a video game definitely um i think you know the story it, it, it could have been better but it was still cool it was still cool a good gameplay was fun but it wasn't it was still repetitive and but the boss battles were phenomenal and i think you know that's kind of what brings me up to like why i loved it so much was the boss battles were great i think the stories and the characters were cool all right but i wish they were just kind of more fleshed out more i do i do remember seeing maximilian uh maximilian dudes uh kind of take on it where basically you know you don't really feel too much for your party which it's like i know yeah in final fantasy that's kind of what you do you feel for your party you like your maybe your favorite party member here it's kind of like you know i like clive and i like joshua and that's really it and you know sib was cool and after that it's like eh, whatever i guess uh oh boy uh i forgot bahamut's uh what his name he had a cool name though uh but he he was cool but like you didn't really get too much with him for real, for real, you don't get too much with him, but I, I do think it was a fun game, and I think it is one of the better games of 26, uh, 2024, three that I played, so I, I'm still confident with it being number six. Number, let's get into top five. These are five games that I think, you know, all had game of the year material in them. Game of the, they could have been game of the year, and then like, I wouldn't have been mad. 
Yeah, and so let's go ahead and get to number five. We have Armor Court 6. Armor Court 6 is the first Armor Court I've ever played. I got into it, and I think a lot of people got into it because, you know, we're from Soft Fans now from the Soul series, you know, Demon Souls, Souls, uh, the Soul, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Sekiro, Elden Ring, all that. Like, I've played all those, and I've loved those. I never played, uh, I never played an Armor Court because I'm never not really into mechs like that, to be honest. You know, when it comes to mechs and stuff, it's like, they're cool in concept, but it's like, most of the time, I feel like story stuff, mechs, uh, mechs don't really get to they're not really done that well so that that's kind of but that's my opinion you know on it and i i just didn't really like too much when it comes to stuff so i never really tried any mech stuff but i wanted to decide to try our record six because I was like i mean shit why not i mean i like from soft i can't imagine that they're gonna do bad i can't imagine they're gonna do any bad or anything so hey let's let's go ahead and try it out and i loved it like as you can see through my playthroughs all through my YouTube channel on here. Like, you can see my playthroughs. I love that game. That game was so fun. It was challenging still, but it's like, you know, it was very, very fair. It wasn't as hard as, like, you know, I feel like a typical Souls game, except for, like, some of the bosses. But it's like, you know, with the different build combinations and, like, the, all you could do, it was just great. I think the PvP is fun. I think the, um... I think they're called... It's kind of like those ranking ones that you do. Where you go ahead and get different parts and stuff. You go ahead and fight the it's like kind of like an AI version of those people. I think those are fun. I think I think it was just fun all around. And then just the fact of the matter, which I didn't even get to do yet, but I know you can't. I know it is. Uh, you do a new game plus, and it's different story. It's different missions in there. And then new game plus plus is apparently like a whole new new story all together. You know, I I, I that probably would have propelled this even higher if I would have been able to go ahead and do that. But there was just so many games coming out during that time that. I wasn't able to go ahead and do it, but from what I did play in it, you know, from just the first new game, great, great game, great game, phenomenal. I will definitely play more armor cores and stuff like that. I know it's apparently different from the, like, it's a little bit different from the other ones. So I would definitely go back and try the other ones. I don't think they're, I think the other, this one, people said is looser. It's not as stiff. I think the other ones are stiffer when it comes to controlling your mech. So I don't know. Like, I, I'll definitely have to see, but I, I, I love this game. It was a great game. All right, let's go ahead and get to number four everybody was arguing how did it not win game of the year well realistically in my eyes it was never number it was never number two it was never number two in there spider-man 2 but my number four is spider-man 2 spider-man 2 was a very fun game i think story driven and all that was very fun definitely one of the better games i've played during out the year and you know just great games just a great game all around uh, I think it, it's very easy to platinum, very easy to get into, but that's the biggest issue with it is it's like, damn, once you get into it and you finish everything, there ain't really much else to do in it. I think the game's fun. I think the combat's cool. I think the side missions are cool. I don't have a problem with the side content. I think the side content actually was fairly fun, and I do enjoy that, you know, it kind of feels like a, a progression system when you actually do the side missions and stuff, just like a collectible here and there. Some are collectibles, are, you know, like the spider bots. But so even with the finishing the spider bots, you get a conclusion to that and you get to learn more. And even while you're collecting them, you get like kind of like little checkpoints of Genki calling in, like and telling you like, oh, no, this is weird. You know, we're getting the system pick up, you know, here. Oh, this is from the future. Like, uh, how did this happen? You know, kind of, you know, when you hear that, you kind of figure out where it's coming from. But even still, it's just fun to do. I think, you know, from Sandman stuff, the pictures, the Mysterio. God, the Mysterio ones. Ugh. I think the only ones I didn't really care for were the... Um, was the one we got to do the trail for the birds and then also there was one more oh the symbiote nest i didn't really like the symbiote nest either i i got those out the way off camera i did not want to do those on camera i was like please just get those get this get this stuff overall i think you know peter miles store is good i think venom was cool i think it just does spoiler word does suck that you only get to play as venom for a little bit and he's barely in the game it, he's there for like the last two hours of the game and that's really it and it kind of sucks. That is my biggest complaint with that is that they kind of had this, you know, the, they announced the game with like Venom being in mind, but it's like realistically, it's like, yeah, it's mostly Craven. And then Venom comes, Venom does his thing, Craven's out. So, like I said, spoilers, spoilers. I will have spoilers up. Craven comes, you know, spoiler, you know, Craven dies, gets killed by Venom, and then Venom comes over as the main villain, and that kind of lasts like two hours. And then you're done. <laughs> you're done with the game. And then you just go do your side stuff. Because I think, yeah, the last, uh, the very last thing you can even do, like, you have to beat the game for. And it's like, that, yeah, that that's kind of it. And 
it, I think that is why it takes away from is that it, 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 at the end of the day, it is a story game that there's only so much you can do. It's not this big thought out game where you can go ahead and do different things, different builds and different, different everything. And it's just doing it. So I think that's kind of what like sucks for me. So, but I, overall, I did enjoy the game. Still a good game. Not a good, not a ten game. I, I, I love, I loved it. Like I, I don't ever complain with it. I will, or I will never say it's bad, a bad game. It's a good game. So it, it just wasn't the game of the year for me. But let's get into top three. Top three are S tier games for me of the year. I think these are games that are pretty great, broke expectations, and you know, just you know, showing out. So let's go ahead and start with number three, fighting game on the list. Street Fighter Six. Street Fighter Six is probably the best Street Fighter in my opinion that I played since since three, since three or four. Because uh, you know, uh, my biggest like I played like two as a kid, and I played three as a kid, but I wasn't really like playing, playing. I was just you know butt mashing like i wasn't really too into it but i wasn't really playing too much like as serious but four was kind of the first one where i kind of was able to and i understood what i was doing and i got into it and i played it at like that competitive level but you know just learning the characters and combos and stuff and you know it's definitely like because i played five a little bit when it came out and i didn't really care for it i know it got better as it did but i didn't have a playstation so i was only able to play it when my friend my friend was over and or was at my friend's house and yeah i just wasn't and it just it wasn't that cool Street Fighter 6 though, it just hits every mark, you know, it's a fun game, very good online, very fun uh, characters, new characters at that, has that funky feeling like Street Fighter 3, you know, obviously I know it's a sequel to Street Fighter 3, so that's probably why it feels that way, and it, it, it's just overall a really good time, and I do think, you know, with season 1 coming, you know, up, you know we have uh, Aku, uh, Akuma coming out soon, you know, I think that's really going to bring a lot more people in as well, because some people have been waiting for Akuma to come out, me included, that I've been waiting. But you know, I mean, I'm a I'm a Jerry Marisa player. You know, Marisa Marisa on top. So I think it's just a fun game all around. I think it's uh, definitely one of the better fighting games that we've gotten in a long time. So, and it's just setting the standard. I can't wait till Tekken Eight comes out at the end of the month. So we're gonna see if they, you know that can live up to hype as well. So let's go ahead and get to the top two. Number two, I will say this right now. I will say this right now because I know I'm gonna probably get a little bit of like what. Number two is only at number two because I really skip, I, haven't, I haven't beaten it yet. I haven't had time to beat it yet, but I have been playing it a lot and I've enjoyed every second I played it. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is my number two because, like I said, I haven't beaten it yet, but from what I play, I'm still in Act 1. I, I'm in Act 2 technically, but I went back to Act 1 because I felt like I kind of kind of uh, jumped the gun into getting into Act 2. I feel like I didn't do everything I needed to do in Act 1, so I'm going back there just kind of finishing everything up in Act 1. Uh, just to see if I missed anything, but from the characters, the lore, the gameplay, I'm not into D and D. Like I've never played like a D and D before. I've been invited to play, but I just never did it. I, I'm into that style stuff, but it's like I've just never done it. So it's like this is kind of like my first like jump into that field. I know it's still a little different than you know your average D and D, but it's still very fun. I, I love it. I love the characters. I love the choices you can make and how everything matters. Like how all the choices matter and everything like that and. Uh, it kind of feels like, you know, it's a different style of game. And it's like, I really think, you know, going forward that a lot of the creators of RPGs and stuff need to take into account this game because this is a game. This is game of like decade material right here, which is crazy to say as a number two spot here. But it is game of decade material where it's like it gives you so much options. This is a gamer's game. This is something where you can actually enjoy and do and play over and over and over and it never being the same. And I think that's what makes this so great. And I think that's what makes it so phenomenal and why it deserves all the praise that it got in even game of the year. I think that's why it deserves all of that when it comes to it, because it's like, it, it's, it's good. Like, I don't think you could sit here and like, like I said, so many people that did never play this style of game went into it and was like, holy shit. What is this? This is a world. This is a, these are some characters. These are some choices. These are some things. Some people are like, oh, I don't like the, you know, the turn based combat, which I get. Because I used to be the same way. I used to be anti-turn based. And then, you know, Final Fantasy kind of is what changed that for me in Persona as well. And it's it's just something that I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm open-minded and I got into just because it's like, I, it's phenomenal. And, you know, as I beat it, you know, I'm probably, it, like I said, this has very well chance of being number one, of beating my number one. But, you know, for right now, it's number two. <laughs> but let's go ahead and get into number one number one was very special and probably the biggest surprise that i've had ever since it was announced and that's gonna be liza p liza p was a game that you know it's a soulsborne it's it's like a souls like 
where it basically is, you know, you're playing as Pinocchio and you're going through the story and, you know, you're trying, you're finding puppets, you know, that have gone crazy. I think this was a game that, you know, a lot of us probably kind of wrote out like it was, eh, it's just another Souls. Like it's, it's gonna, it's a game that's going to try to be like a Souls game, but it's not going to hit that mark. But I think this game hit the mark and like crazy. It had the bosses, it had the gameplay, it had the combat system, it had like, it had unique systems as well. Like I think the whole, like, um, the whole durability setting, like where you had to go ahead and like, you know, uh, spark your blade, you know, basically sharpen your blade. I think that was crazy good. It, it can't, got my ass kicked a lot of times, but I do think that's a very unique thing and very cool that they added into it. And also atmosphere, atmosphere and world building. This game did that so great. It felt like, you know, a Pinocchio Bloodborne style, I guess I would say. It didn't feel more than Dark Souls. It felt definitely, like, it felt combat wise like Dark Souls, but it felt, it was combat wise Dark Souls with the, I guess I would say, enemies of Bloodborne style, like kind of, like not Bloodborne style, like in, like how they look, but how they like, like they're very energetic. They're in your face. They're gonna give you, they're gonna make you fight. You know, and you have to earn that win. But it's like, and all that. It's like it it, it just hits every mark. I think very well, and it, it was just super surprising to me because holy, I didn't think. We would ever get a game like that, and like I said, I like I've been saying to everybody, and even in my review at the end of the my uh, playthrough, I think it is generally the best Souls like game we've gotten next to like a FromSoft game. It seems like they studied and did their homework and really hit the mark. And it's like I know they already announced DLC and a sequel, so it's I can't wait. I will be there. I know we kind of get at the end of the game. Uh, it seems like it's Dorothy from um The Wizard of Oz, like you know they're old dude that was looking for the gold apple for the tree the gold coin he uh he basically was looking for it. and you know uh we see kind of like a little bit of a so, so i wonder if she's going to be the dlc or if she's going to be a part of the sequel either way i'm going to be here definitely doing more playthroughs of it bosses were great music was great combat was great world building was great story was great i think you know the whole you know geppetto basically like kind of screwing over the world with uh with the with it and everything spoiler uh and screwing over the world and making it like this just because you want to get a sun back it was very cool i think the very final final boss was very cool uh it, it said nothing felt unfair it all felt very fair it all felt like you know it, it, that, that's the problem with a lot of games i'm looking at you lords of fallen um that's the problem with a lot of like souls like games that try, try to follow that that form just all around, you know, just a phenomenal game. I think, you know, it deserves game of the it, it, it kind of felt snubbed that it didn't get voted for game of the year. It didn't even get nominated. Because it's like, I feel like, like I said, I do think this kind of deserves a spot over Resident Evil 4 in Wonder. But, I mean, you know, I'm not the one picking, obviously. I'm not the one there. But I, I, I think, you know, those were great. I think, you know, all around, these are great games. I think they're phenomenal, like I said. But best Soulsborne, like, best Souls, like, ever. Uh, I played and it it's it knocks Neo out of the water, um, and like I guess it was saying like you know when I'm talking to you, uh, it felt fair and I'm talking to you, um, Lords of the Fallen where it's like you know it didn't feel like you know it just threw anything at you just multiple enemies like just to make it hard. Lords of the Fallen I think that's where it fell flat was because it just wanted to be like oh we're gonna be a Souls game but we're gonna just throw everything at you. It doesn't have that feel. It didn't have the feeling of a of a Soulsborne game. It, it, it didn't it didn't feel good. It didn't feel good, so I don't know. I think that's where that's, that kind of fell flat. But other than that, you know, I think Liza P was a ten out of ten. Not ten out of ten. Not ten out of ten. I think Liza P was probably a, a smooth nine and a half out of uh, ten. Almost perfect game. Had a little bit of issues in there, but it's like otherwise that I think it was phenomenal. Biggest surprise of the year, and I loved it. I I can't wait to see what this team does with you know the DLC and the sequel. I will be here. I will be playing. So be prepared. So. All right, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Uh, if you do, you agree? Do you disagree with my list? Let me know down below. It's like you know, uh, let me know what you think, and you know what you think I should have added, <coughs> and what you what do you think I shouldn't have added? Basically, you know, hey, just let me know down below. Let those comments go. But all right, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to go ahead and go to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Ring that notification bell so you get the notification when I drop a new video. Also, have the Kick Twitch, TikTok, and Twitter down below where you can catch my different streams over on Kick.com and Twitch.com where I do my live streams, where I do my music reactions, YouTube reactions live there. I do gaming and everything, you know, come through if you want to see that. Also, I have my tweets on Twitter and my shorts on TikTok. 
But that's going to do it. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Please make sure, you, like I said, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And see you guys next time on Sari X. Peace.